All right, welcome back to part two of the F-14 horizontal stab antenna making and placing video, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> All right, so I got the one stab done. It didn't take too long. It actually went surprisingly well. Came out very much better than I was hoping for. It looks almost like the real thing, which is what we're going for. All right, anyway, instead of me just rambling on, let's get back to some work. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little brass piece here. Make sure y'all can actually see what I'm doing. All right, if it wasn't for this shine from the light. See if that helps any. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right. So take the brass piece, put it in position. You want this line to run a just about down the center of the brass position fixture. Place your little fairing that we made in the previous video in position. So the line runs about down the middle of that and then mark its position with a Sharpie marker. can't remember if I showed y'all in the last video or not, but after I got all these cut out and positioned, or I should say just cut out to shape, I placed it back in the little fixture and I just took the sandpaper and I roughened up the bottom side of it. Now take a little piece of scrap paper inside where we just marked. Just roughen it up a little bit. just so it's a little easier for it to, to stick. Doesn't have to be enough, just a little bit. Then just regular old medium CA, just put a very, very small bead of CA inside of where it's going. Place the piece back in position. If any glue squirts out, just take a rag, dab it up, and take your little positioning tool, put it back in place. Now just take a little bit of accelerator, just spray it on there, and then just smear the accelerator around the seam and it'll wick its way in place to hold it in position. All right, so that's one side. Then we just repeat basically the same thing for the other side. Push a little positioning fixture in place. Take your your fairing. The one thing you have to make sure on this one is that they both line up top to bottom at the back side. It's not so much important on the on the the tip side because we're just going to cut that out eventually. But here on the inside, it needs to be as close to the same as possible. So that in position, you should do the exact same thing as you did on the top. you notice I've got the horizontal stab on an old blanket here. Keyword old if you're married. But if you're not, or if you are and you use one of our good ones, uh, you won't be probably sleeping on a sofa for that night. Same thing here, just repeat the process. That's in place, take your little fixture, put it inside. A little thing of accelerator. Probably notice I'm using mercury adhesive. 
the bottles are mercury adhesive and the glue is mercury adhesive, but the, the accelerator is zap. The, uh, <laughs> the mercury adhesive accelerator bottles are nice, but their spray tips absolutely suck, so I don't recommend them. This is the 30th spray tip bottle I've had. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can, the little actual squirter that missed it is actually coming out of the bottle again. They sent me, I don't know, probably about 20 of these little just the squirt tips, and every one of them has had the exact same problem. It's just something about the plastic they use just doesn't hold up, and it eventually just lets go. So, I'm more of a, a zap pacer products guy, but mercury is the only thing the local hobby shop carries, so you gotta do with what you can get. This top side came loose, so I'm just gonna re glue that. All right. So the on the full scale, these are they are parallel and flush with the trailing edge. And if you remember the picture, it had a big white blob. That's the actual antenna. So in order to get these to look like that, what we have to do is we have to fill these with body filler and then sand them down so they so they look correct. In order to do that. Now if we just place body filler in, it just, it's going to fall out the side. So just taking a pair of lineman scissors, I'm just going to nip this flange up until the crease of the fairing. So you can see right there where the little cut is, right up to the crease. Then adjust the pair of pliers. In this case, I think they're duck bill with no, uh, with no teeth on them, they're just smooth. Gonna bend it in just a little bit, then I'm gonna take our positioning fixture, put it back in place. I'm just gonna fold where we cut back around in there, and then use the end of these pliers to get it in there nice and nice and tight. Then do the exact same thing on the other side. And once they're pulled apart, what you're left with is a nice little round hole for body filler to fit in. Since these don't quite overlap like the other ones, again, they're handmade plugs, so you're going to have a little indiscrepancies. I'm going to put the, the positioning tool back in and just take a piece of masking tape to join them. There with masking tape in place, pull your fixture out, and there you have it. One stab, and the other stab. There you can see both of them are done and pretty much near identical. Just what we want. I'm also going to do the little masking tape trick on this one as well, just, to, just so they don't fall apart. All right, so now the whole body filler thing. What I use is Evercoat Easy Sand. 
So y'all can see it. Every coop, easy sand. This big tube, 24 ounces, I think was like 30 bucks. And this stuff is super easy to sand. The, the name does not lie. It's not like your typical Bondo body filler where you have to go at it with 80 grit paper to get the knock down. And this stuff is awesome. I highly suggest if you do a lot of body work or paint work or whatever, go ahead and order you a tube. You'll be you'll be amazed at how good it is. Since we're not doing a whole lot of filler and filling on that, I'm just gonna use a piece of scrap cardboard. I took a regular body uh, body spatula and I cut them down into pretty much whatever shape you need. I've got that one that's got nice 90 degree edges. This is a full size. I think that's about a, a third or a quarter of one. You can see how small I've cut them down. And then I'll just sand another taper to it. So you put a little glob here of body filler in place. Use this stuff really well in ventilated areas. It stinks. And then I'm just going to put a very, very small amount of hardener in here. If I can get any out of this tube, I'm about out. Take the corner of the spatula, just mix it up. You'll see it'll get that little bit of a baby blue color. Nice thing with this filler, and most other body fillers, you can change however much or however darker or lighter the color is. Kind of dictates how uh, how fast it cures. You can mix some of this stuff up to where you can just barely see it's got a blue tint, and it'll give you 20 minutes to work with. Or you can mix it to where it's really blue, like the color here, and you have like two or three minutes to work with. All right. Anyway, take this spatula with a little corner of body filler on there and then just dangle it over and let it drip down in. This one it would be nice to have this stuff a little thinner. And let that one sit and let it just drain down in a little bit. And repeat the process for the other one. Hopefully this stuff will run all the way down to the beginning of these fairings before it fully cures. That way you get a nice solid structure under the, the fairing so you don't crush it. I'm going to do just a little bit of filling on the tip of this one.
nice thing with this stuff is if you get it on the the litho plate, it just kind of pops right off. So it, it pays to be a little careful with it, but it's not very hard to get it off if it does get on there. And since I got a little bit of body filler left, I'm just going to do a little bit of filling work on the root side of these stabs. Basically, once all of this is done, these stabs are complete and they're ready to be molded. So at this point, I'm, I got to tell about 90% of the way done. I got just a little bit of filling work to do on these stabs and then just a little bit on the, the vertical stabilizer fairings. And the tail section is done for the F14. The flaps on the F14 and the rudders are done. The, uh, the fuselage should be done here pretty soon. The, the biggest job I got left is the, the wings, which I'm hoping to have those completed by this time next week. I'm being optimistic, but hey, it's good to have goals <laughs> and high expectations. <laughs> All right, so that's one way of working with a litho plate. There's a whole other lot of different ways to work with this stuff. I'm gonna do some work on the wings today as well. Um, I originally had plans on filling the entire top and bottom surface of the wings with, uh, with body filler just to make life a little easier and just sand it down. But with all the, the hatches and all on the top of that wing, it's, probably just gonna be just as easy to do it in multiple pieces of litho plate unfortunately you can't do it all in one big piece but that's something that can be fixed during the finishing process so basically here's one wing panel as I left it, I believe in the last video, it uh, still a lot left to do with it. You can see a little bit of wing tip's been done. The leading edge part around the slats and around the the uh, the spoilers have been done, but there's still a lot to do. So I will make that video, or actually I'll get you guys involved with that video next time as well. So we'll see y'all after lunch.